this step is um, what I consider to be the second hardest, or also second easiest, depending on which way you look at it. Uh, so, second hardest step. Now, um, after you've got your corners oriented, mine are done, and you can tell because green and blue is facing up. Uh, make sure you got the right sides, green up, uh, yellow S. And um, we're going to do this basically one piece at a time. And the algorithm I'll show you shortly switches these two corners but also switches these two edges. Um, but just like with corner orientation, how it turned this corner, it will fix itself when you're done. So you don't need to worry about that for right now, although there are uh, some situations where you need to do something special to switch these edges back. I'll focus on that later. For right now, all you need to know is it switches these two corners. So here's the algorithm you need to know. So, practice that algorithm a few times until you've got it quite memorized. You'll be using it more than any other algorithm uh, in blind solving. Uh, you can use, since it switches the edges, you can use the same algorithm when you need to place edges. Uh, luckily, there's no edge orientation step. Um, you don't need to worry about that. But for right now, focusing on corners. Now what you do is keep track of your front and top. Look at the corner that's in the buffer zone. This is the new buffer zone, um, and let's see, actually I believe this is the buffer zone, but this is the piece that you are trying to place. So this is the buffer zone, sorry, um, and this is the undisturbance zone, meaning when you put the target corner, wherever this one has to go, in the buffer zone, then you can't disturb this area here. So you can turn this face, which is left front face and the D or down face. So look where this one needs to go and it needs to go to this corner here. So here's my front. It's going from the undisturbance zone to this corner here. So what you do is put this corner in the buffer zone then do the algorithm then you'll bring it back. Similar to when you did edge or, or corner orientation. Now in order to make sure that you have either blue or green facing up when it reaches here you need to turn the left and right faces twice when you are placing the corner. You cannot do it um, just once. Say I go like this and say, oh, it's in the right spot. It's not because you don't have blue facing up. And that means when you put this one in place after doing the algorithm, it won't be turned correctly. So, to put this corner in the buffer zone, you would turn the left side twice. Blue is now on the bottom, right here. Then, turn the front side twice. The D, or down side, you can turn only once. Uh, you can turn twice as well, if you, if you like. So here we have this corner, and when you switch them, we'll put this one back in its proper location. So here I'll do the algorithm, slowly. And you can see that there's green there, which means it was successful. That other corner has now been placed here, and that's the one we'll do next. But for right now, you want to put this corner back exactly how it got there. I turned the front twice and the left twice. You have to do it backwards, it shouldn't be too challenging. So now we have that corner in its place. Now this corner needs to go down here, and you can tell where it needs to go by looking at the centers. Hopefully, you figure that out. Um, now this is a bit trickier than the first one. So we got this corner all the way down here. It needs to go right here. What you do is you turn the bottom twice. You don't need to memorize these. It's sort of logical, quite logical, although after a while you will have it memorized. I'm not going to show the evidence for that. Um, so turn the bottom twice, then the front twice. There you go, in the buffer zone. Did the algorithm. Now, turn the front twice, bottom twice to put it back. And you can see um, it lines up with the centers right there, right there, and the blue ones. So now you look which one is up here, and this one needs to go down here. This one's a bit easier. Turn the bottom once, front twice. You got green up there, still oriented. 
So, do the algorithm, then bring it back. There you have it in its place. Now you look at this one. This piece needs to go right here. And this one's a little tricky. What I usually do is turn the front twice, turn it once, turn the front twice again. There you go, and the buffer zone. Do the same thing, put it back. Perfect. Um, this one needs to go right down here, so you don't need to do anything. Um, that's the easiest one, obviously. There you go. This one needs to go down here. So we'll just, um, let's see. You want to turn front face twice. That's a very easy one. Easiest, or er, second easiest one. Bring it back down. And you should see a checker pattern developing. You should have X's starting to form on each side. Not done yet. One corner to do. And it needs to go down over here. Turn the bottom. Turn this face twice. Now I got this corner here. And put it back the same way. Now you can see the checker pattern is on every side of the cube, ignoring the edges. And that step is complete. I'll cover memorization for that step in my next video, which I expect to come out sometime next week. For right now, practice the first two steps. First one you can do without looking. Um, second one, just practice while looking. And again, look at that nice looking checker pattern all over the cube. And the next and hardest step is the edges. Hardest to memorize and hardest to solve, but still my favorite part. So, um, I'll probably finish the tutorial in six parts, I'm guessing now. Um, each part takes two videos. So, hopefully I'll be done by the end of the month. So, thanks for watching.